Today we are going to look at a Voodoo 2 that needs a bit of work. This Voodoo 2 was sent to me by a viewer from the US. Let's call her Amy. Amy contacted me showing me some pictures of her Voodoo 2 that she bought a couple of years ago. Unfortunately, the card was mailed to her poorly packaged. And as you may expect, the tiny pins on one of the 3DFX chips suffered some damage. On the corner of the FBI chip, we can see multiple pins that have deformed badly, and some have even disconnected from the pads of the PCB. What is special about this Voodoo 2 is that it is equipped with 110MHz memory chips, which is not as common compared to the 100MHz chips most of the Voodoo 2s come with. Let's jump under the microscope and see what else we can find. The pins of the 3DFX Voodoo 2 chips are a lot smaller compared to the ones on the first generation of Voodoo cards. It may be a bit difficult to spot, but the 6 pins in the corner of the FBI chip have been badly damaged. Some have been pushed towards the chip and others are bending away from it. Since the pins are a lot thinner compared to the Voodoo 1, they are probably a lot easier to break off. So, we have to be extremely careful. The remaining pins and all other chips look good. Although I believe there has been someone reflowing the solder around those chips. To me, it looks like someone was here before. And there is also some white paste on one of the TMU chips which looks like thermal compound. Maybe someone tried to overclock this card. But it could also be that the previous owner tried to cool this card properly. Those chips can get quite warm, north of 70 degrees when in use. There is also this connection on the pads that connects multiple pins. I have not seen this on a card before, but those are not solder bridges. This is part of the PCB. And then we also need to check the back of the card. And there is also something we need to take care of. Two surface mounted capacitors have been damaged. One is cracked with half of its body missing and needs to be replaced. I assume we will find a similar looking component nearby from which we can borrow the correct value. Capacitor C77, the one next to C82, has a chipped housing. We need to replace this one too. But before I jump into the repair, I want to tell you about PCBWay, the sponsor of today's video. If you're looking for a reliable PCB manufacturer for your electronic projects, then look no further than PCBWay, your go-to destination for high-quality printed circuit boards tailored to your specifications. With PCBWay, you can experience seamless and hassle-free PCB ordering thanks to their user-friendly online platform. Upload your design, choose your specification and let PCBWay handle the rest. I post all my PCB designs on PCBWay's shared project space if you're interested in upgrading the memory of your Voodoo 1 or creating FPM memory modules for older systems. Links to PCBWay.com and my projects are in the video description. Before I take the soldering iron out, I want to try to straighten those pins as well as I can. There is this one pin that has been pushed towards the 3DFX chip's housing. I need to bring this pin forward before I can align it. Otherwise, I may not see if it touches an adjacent pin or pad. With that taken care of, we can focus on the rest of the pins. The tweezers I'm using here are extremely thin. I'm quite surprised how small those pins on the 3DFX chip are. You may also notice that my microscope has trouble to deliver sharp and clear images. This is the highest zoom level the microscope can achieve. I'm using a Barlow lens to increase the distance between the microscope and the PCB I'm working on. Only then do I have enough space to work under the microscope with tweezers, a soldering iron or a hot air station. Unfortunately, the image quality suffers due to this. I will show you a few shots later without the Barlow lens. Some of the pins on this chip have been bent badly and they feel extremely brittle. I want to avoid breaking one of those pins. It would be such a pain to attach a replacement wire to this chip. But if I am not mistaken, I have already seen a missing pin at the outermost position. So we will have to attach a self-made replacement pin to this chip later. The two outer pins still present on this chip are in the worst shape. I am trying different tools to provide a counter force at certain points to avoid the pin bending at the wrong locations. This worked quite well, but I could only go so far with that method. I stopped my work after I felt that it was good enough. Yes, it won't be pretty or look like new, but I'm after a working card and not after regrets that I should have stopped earlier with multiple pins broken off. Ah, and here is the missing pin in the corner. Thankfully, it is at the best location I can think of. With nothing on one side of this pin, I can use an engraving pen to remove some of the plastic housing of the 3DFX chip. And then I have to use a knife to remove more of the plastic. 
We need to expose enough metal of the stop so I can solder a small wire to the chip and connect it to the pad again. I also pre-tin the newly exposed metal to make it easier attaching the replacement pin later. But before we go ahead with a pin, I want to apply some solder mask to secure some of the pads back to the PCB. When those pins were hit by force, it looks like some of the pads have been ripped off as well. The first pad I applied solder mask to belongs to the pin that was in the worst condition on this 3DFX chip. Since the pin won't have the best connection to the pad, I'd like to make sure both are at least firmly secured to prevent accidental movement and possibly a connection with adjacent pins or pads. And the other pad that needs to be secured is the one where the trace is rooted from below the chip. Solder mask is cured by UV light. And after a few minutes, the issue of loose pads is a thing of the past. Now let's create a replacement pin. For this, I use a 0.2mm wire and cut it to the length of a Voodoo 2 FBI chip pin. This task was extremely tedious, but thankfully, I just had one pin to fix. The problem with the small space is that it is extremely easy to touch the neighboring pins. Meaning, if you need to fix multiple adjacent pins like this, you may end up desoldering your already fixed pins next to the one you're working on. And now I can show you the microscope footage without the Barlow lens. As you can see, we can zoom in even further into the chip and see more details. I think this replacement pin will do just fine. I think we are done on this side of the card. And now we can focus on the capacitors on the back. First, let's get rid of whatever is remaining of those two broken capacitors. I am also cleaning up the pads so I can easily place the new ones on this board without the need to deal with old solder. To know what values those capacitors most likely have, I will desolder C83, the capacitor right next to C82. The two damaged capacitors most probably had the same capacitance as this one, which does look identical to the ones we removed. And the multimeter tells us that we need 100 nanofarad capacitors. Unfortunately, I do not have the exact size of the original capacitors, but I do have 100 nanofarad capacitors in a package that is a little bit wider. This will be good enough and is not an issue. And now we can go ahead and refix all three capacitors. The one we used to figure out what value we needed and the two new ones. And we are done. The card is almost ready. The only other thing I want to do is to clean up the PCI connector. You may have seen it at the beginning of this video. There is some solder residue on three of the PCI connector pins. I just want to smoothen the solder so that it won't interfere with the PCI socket. But I also do not want to spread any solder to the neighboring gold connectors. Captain tape will do the trick. And then, with a bit of flux, we can get rid of any excess solder. I don't know if there is a method to get the solder completely off the gold, but this is the best I can do for now. And now the card is ready for testing. It is in my K62 Plus system, the one with a modified AMD CPU unlocking an additional 128 kilobytes of level 2 cache. The system booted and the drivers installed without giving me any headache. However, the image quality on the desktop was very poor. I have no idea why this is happening. The moment I opened the 3DFX driver tab, the image quality improved quite a bit, but it was still not good. There could be multiple reasons why the image quality suffered a bit, but more about this in a moment. The 3DFX system info shows a Voodoo 2 board with 4 MB on the FBI chip. Great, this was the chip we were working on. Seems like we are good so far. Furthermore, there are two texture mapping units, also showing up with 4 MB each. Amy's Voodoo 2 reports the full 12 MB of onboard memory. I also used the 3 d effects tool Mojo under DOS to verify those results. There is just one last question to answer. Does it render 3D scenes? Back in Windows, I tried 3 Mark 99 The Voodoo 2 3D Accelerator shows up in the list of cards to select from. And 3 Mark also reports the correct amount of memory. The race benchmark completed, but with the aforementioned noise in the picture. Those Voodoo add-on boards did not have the best image quality, but I believe what we can observe here is a bit worse than normal. It could be that it is my capture setup, the 2D card I'm using, or even the loop cable. Maybe you have an idea why this Voodoo 2 card may have a slightly worse than normal image quality. If you do, maybe you can mention it in the comments, so Amy can pursue more options to clean up the picture output a little bit more. My final tests were done in Need for Speed Porsche, in Direct3D as well as in Glide. 
I had a feeling that Glide worked better on the system. For the Direct 3D tests, I used an S3 Verge in combination with a Voodoo 2, driving a 911 Turbo in yellow. For Glide, I changed the 2D car to a Diamond Viper 330 with a River 128 chipset and the color of the car changed to red. I think that changing the 2D car to the Viper 330 cleared up the picture a little bit, but this may be subjective. Nevertheless, the card worked with both renderers, but I would prefer the Glide API. We have saved yet another piece of PC gaming history, a 3DFX Voodoo 2 with fast 110MHz memory, fully equipped with 12MB. Now the card can go back on its journey to the United States, but this time well packaged. Thank you Amy for allowing me to work on this Voodoo 2 and I hope you will have a lot of fun with this card. And this is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And thanks to all my Patreons for your invaluable support. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.